welcome to another module in this massive open online course on estimation for wireless communication systems. So, we are talking about the estimation of a vector parameter h bar, specifically we are looking at the estimation of this uh, channel vector that arises in a multiple antenna wireless communication system. And yesterday we have derived that the log likelihood function corresponding to the estimation of this vector parameter h bar is given by the least squares cost function, which can be described as this is my log likelihood function that is log likelihood of the observations y bar parameterized by h bar. This is your observation vector this is your channel vector, which is the unknown parameter vector. Remember, we are considering specifically a downlink multiple antenna scenario. And this likelihood function or this basically log likelihood function, this is given as the least squares cost function y bar minus x h bar whole square, where y bar is the observation vector x is remember recall the pilot matrix. Yeah, So, this is just to put remind you of these things this is the pilot matrix and this is basically your least squares cost function. this is basically your least squares cost function also abbreviated as a ls cost function okay so we have derived this log likelihood function for this channel vector or multiple antenna channel estimation and we have shown this is given by your least squares cost function and the channel estimate the maximum likelihood channel estimate h hat is the value of is the parameter vector h bar which minimizes or which basically which minimizes this least square least squares cost function. So, towards that, towards finding this maximum likelihood estimate, first let us simplify this least squares cost function a little bit. Now, we know from our knowledge of matrices and vectors that for any vector v bar, norm of v bar square and this is what we have seen many times before is v bar transpose v bar. So, norm of v bar square or no Euclidean norm square of any vector v bar is v bar transpose v bar, which basically implies that now I can simplify this quantity that is your y bar minus x h bar norm square is basically y bar minus x h bar is basically this quantity y bar minus x h bar transpose times y bar minus h x h bar. And now, therefore, this can be further simplified as basically y bar minus x h bar transpose is y bar transpose minus x h bar transpose is h bar transpose x transpose times y bar minus x h bar. Now, multiplying out the terms y bar transpose y bar minus h bar transpose x transpose y bar minus y bar transpose or minus uh, y bar transpose x h uh, bar plus h bar transpose x transpose x h bar, this is the cost function that we get. All right. So, this is what, what we have used is we have used the property that norm v bar square or norm v bar square of any vector v bar is v bar transpose v bar to simplify this least squares cost function norm of y bar minus x h bar square. Now, let us use another property for any two vectors v bar and u bar, this is also something that we have seen for any two vectors v bar and u bar, v bar transpose u bar, which is a scalar quantity. Remember for this vectors v bar and u bar, which are basically let us say uh, your uh, m dimensional vectors, 
or n dimensional vectors whatever these might be any two vectors v bar transpose u bar is v 0 v 1 v m to u 0 u 1 or uh, up to u m which is basically equal to the summation that is v 0 u 0 plus so on up to v m u m which is also you can see u bar transpose v bar that is u 0 up to u m times v 0 up to v m because this quantity this is also equal to u bar transpose v bar because this quantity v bar transpose u bar you can see this is clearly a number there is also basically it is not a vector it is a scalar quantity it is not a vector it is a scalar quantity that is basically it is simply a number. Therefore, if you take the transpose of a number if you take the transpose of a number basically you get the number itself. Therefore, the transpose of this v bar transpose u bar is basically equal to itself. Therefore, what we have is we have v bar transpose u bar equal to v bar transpose u bar transpose equal to basically u bar transpose v bar. So, v bar for any two vectors v bar and u bar we have v bar transpose u bar is equal to u bar transpose v bar. Now, we are going to use that property to simplify this cost function that we have developed for the least squares cost that is the simplification further simplify this least squares cost function. Now, if you look at your least squares cost function you can notice these two terms one is your h bar x transpose y bar y bar transpose x by h bar and these quantities are nothing but the transpose of each other. For instance, let us look at this quantity y bar into y bar transpose x h bar. So, this quantity is basically equal to that this is a number. So, this is basically equal to the transpose of itself y bar transpose x h bar transpose which is basically equal to h bar transpose x transpose y bar. So, these two quantities y bar transpose x h bar and h, x, h, bar tra, h bar transpose x transpose y bar are basically equal which means basically you have what you have is basically these two quantities here these two quantities are equal. these two quantities are equal therefore, your least squares cost function can be further simplified as norm y bar minus x h bar square equals y bar transpose y bar minus 2 h bar transpose x transpose y bar plus h bar transpose x transpose x times h bar and now what we can see is basically the maximum likelihood estimate of the channel vector h is the one which minimizes this cost function. So, the ML estimate basically can be found as the minimum of this cost function or ML estimate. the ML estimate of h bar minimizes the above cost function. That is known as that we have already seen that is known as the least squares estimate or the maximum likelihood estimate in this case of the channel vector. Now, how do we find the h bar which minimizes the cost function? 
and for that basically as you all know for any function to find the minimum that is if it is differentiable I can basically differentiate it and set it equal to 0 to find the point where the minima is. So, basically I have to differentiate this cost function with respect to the channel vector h bar and set it equal to 0 to find the uh, to find the h bar for which this cost function is minimum. So, basically to find the maximum likelihood estimate to find your ML estimate I have to minimize which is basically in fact equivalent to minimizing minimizing the simplified cost function y bar transpose y bar minus 2 h bar transpose x transpose y bar plus x bar transpose x transpose x h bar and to minimize this we have to differentiate and set equal to 0 that is we have to differentiate with, with respect to the parameter vector h bar and set it equal to 0 and the point at which it is 0 basically that corresponds to the minimum and that is basically that h bar is basically the maximum likelihood estimate. However, to differentiate it with respect to h bar recall that h bar is a vector. So, we have to basically define this notion of a vector derivative which is basically similar to the gradient with respect to a vector all right. So, let us define the vector. So, for any vector derivative so let us again although some of you might already be familiar with this notion of a vector derivative or gradient for the sake of completeness let us now define this vector derivative that is for a function f of any vector h the derivative that is d f I can write this as d f by d h that is the derivative with respect to the vector h is nothing but the vector of the partial derivatives with respect to the components of h that is I have to differentiate with respect to each component of h dou f by dou h 1, dou f by dou h 2 so on up to dou f over dou h m that is with respect to that is simply differentiate and this is a natural definition that is simply differentiate this function with respect to each component of that vector h that is nothing but the gradient or the vector derivative. So, this is basically your vector derivative this is your vector derivative and these are your partial derivatives with respect to components of h. partial derivative with components with respect to components of the vector h bar ok. For instance, let us take a look at a simple example. Let us consider the simplest of functions. For instance, if my function f of h bar is basically some vector c bar transpose times h bar which is basically your c naught c 1 or c 1 c 2 c m up to c 2 c m up to h 1 h 2 up to h m which is basically nothing but c 1 h 1 plus c 2 h 2 so on up to c m h m. So, this is basically your c 1 h 1 plus c 2 h 2 plus so on 
up to C m H m. Now, you can clearly see that the partial derivative this is your f of h bar. Now, you can clearly see that the partial derivative with respect to h 1 is c 1, partial derivative with respect to h 2 is c 2 and so on and so forth partial derivative with respect to the mth component h m equals c m. So, no surprise there and what you can see is basically now if you summarize this thing, the therefore the derivative with respect to h bar is basically your partial derivative with respect to c 1 up to your partial I am sorry partial derivative with respect to the individual components h 1 up to h m which is nothing but your c 1 c 2 up to c m which is basically the vector c bar. Okay. So, if c bar is a constant vector and my function of the vector h bar is c bar transpose h bar, then the derivative of that with respect to x h bar is naturally c bar. Right. And you can uh, you can see this as an analog to the scalar derivative that is if I take a constant k multiply it with x then the derivative with respect to x is simply k. All right. This is simply a natural extension of that to the vector scenario that is instead of k times x you are looking at c bar transpose times x bar. So, the derivative of basically let me summarize this the derivative of this uh, this quantity the derivative with respect to h bar of this function c bar transpose h bar is basically c bar. And now also realize something very straightforward that is we have c bar as we have seen again several times before c bar transpose h bar is h bar transpose c bar which implies the derivative of h bar transpose c bar with respect to c bar is also c bar. And therefore, now I can summarize this set of relations as the derivative of c bar transpose h bar with respect to h bar equals the derivative with respect to h bar of h bar transpose c bar and that is basically your and that is basically nothing but your vector c bar. So, this is the this is basically the vector derivative. Okay. So, this is basically the relation for your vector derivative, a simple relation for the vector derivative. All right. okay. And uh, so, basically what we have seen in this module so far is basically we have seen your least squares cost function. All right. And we have simplified this least squares cost function using several properties. We have simplified this least squares cost function. We have defined this concept of the vector derivative. And now we are trying to ex explore the properties of this vector derivative. Remember, towards differentiating that least squares cost function, basically setting it to zero, so we can find the value of the vector parameter h bar for which that least squares cost function is minimized. And that will basically give us the maximum likelihood estimate of this channel vector h bar. All right. So, let us stop this module over here and we will continue with other aspects of this vector derivative that is other properties of the vector derivative and applying this vector derivative to the least squares cost function itself in the next module. All right. So, let us stop here.